Hey everyone, my name is Maggie. In my previous video, I talked about the artificial file from the Renaissance era, and I really encourage you to check that video out as well for more on Renaissance arts. Today, I want to stay in the Renaissance era for a bit longer to talk about another Italian artist, Titian. The Renaissance era ranges from the 14th century to the 16th century, centered around Italy and Europe. Like said in my previous video, this era marks the transition from the Middle Ages to modern day civilization, ending a dark period of wars, famines, and pandemics that caused the death of many. The Renaissance era movements were influenced by the revival of classical Greek and Roman philosophy, literature, and arts at that time, as well as the advances in international tradings and rational economy under the ruling of the Medici family. As a result, there were great social changes in the arts, cultures, politics, and the economy, with the uprising of humanism, secularism, and individualism. One of the most important aspects of the Renaissance era is the uprising humanism, which provoked doubts for the Roman Catholic Church. This ultimately led to the Reformation movement that resulted in the division of a new branch under Christianity called Protestantism. Some of the greatest artists, scientists, authors, and philosophers in human history thrived in the Renaissance era, including the legendary William Shakespeare, Nicholas Copernicus, and Leonardo da Vinci. Renaissance art was made in combination with new advances and discoveries in sciences in fields such as anatomy, astronomy, and mathematics. They were characterized by realism and naturalism, in order to depict the beauty of people, objects, and nature in a true-to-life way. Techniques such as using realistic linear perspectives and using shadows and lights to add three-dimensional depth to their works became common as they infused emotions in their pieces. Titian was one of the leading authors during the Italian Renaissance. Unlike Raphael, he lived a very long and accomplished life, passing at the age of 86 years old. He was a very versatile painter who mastered all aspects of landscapes, portraits, mythological and religious theme pieces. His powerful compositions, application techniques, and the primacy of colors over lines stood out in contrast with the mannerism prevalent amongst others in Italy. He was greatly recognized during his times and was considered the most important member of the 16th century Venetian school. He was a principal painter to the imperial court and was also hired by Pope Paul III to paint portraits. His works made a profound influence on subsequent generations of Western art. A famous quote that was used by his contemporaries to describe him was, the sun amidst moustache not only among the Italians but all the painters of the world. Phone named Tiziano Vercellio he was born in what is now Pieve di Cadore, Italy, between 1488 and 1490 as the oldest of four children. In his teenage years, Titian became an apprentice to the Venetian artist Sebastiano Zucato. He was soon passed to the workshop of the Bellini family, where his true teacher became Giovanni Bellini, the greatest Venetian artist back then. Titian's early works were largely influenced by Giovanni Bellini as well as Giorgiolo, who was another follower of Bellini. They once collaborated on the frescoes of the Fondaco de Tedeschi, for which the attributions of several works are still controversial today, as it was so difficult to distinguish between the two. In fact, after Giorgiolo's death in 1510, Titian assumed the task of adding the landscape background to Giorgiolo's unfinished work, Sleeping Venice. As Titian built his reputation, he was commissioned to paint some of the most prestigious public religious paintings. He further established his reputation and status with the nearly seven meters high altarpiece, Assumption of the Virgin, for the high altar of the Franciscan Church of Santa Maria Gloriosa de Ferrari in Venice. It displays the grand nature of Mary's triumph as she ascends into heaven accompanied by a large semicircular array of angels, while God watches from the very above and the startled apostles at the very bottom watches in astonishment at this miracle. This extraordinary piece was done on such a grand scale that was rarely seen before in Italy, 
creating a sensation feeling for the viewers. It also shows Titian's tendency towards vivid and highly contrasting colors with luminous qualities that he favored in the early years of his artistic career. A short time after completing the legendary altarpiece, Titian created the Worship of Venice. This virtually colorful piece of artwork incorporates the subjects of love, fertility, and regeneration in nature, while presented with great formal elegance. Titian's composition here is based on a description by the late antique writer Philostratus of a painting of Cupid's gathering apples in the presence of Venice amid a tree-girt landscape. This painting aesthetically displays a Roman rite of worship honoring Venice, the Roman goddess of love, beauty, sexuality, and fertility, while Cupids are found playing and expressing love in a meadow between the statue of Venice and a row of apple trees, creating this harmonious scene of playfulness. Another one of his many paintings of Venice, completed later, Venice of Rubino, is also one of his most significant works. It represents the allegory of marriage and was a teaching model to the young wife of the Duke of Urbino who requested this painting. This was evident in the representation of Venice, the goddess of love, as a sensual and delectable woman staring at a viewer who could not ignore her beauty. In this, he sets a standard for the physical beauty of Renaissance women and the light and warm color of her body in contrast to the dark background shows a sumptuous eroticism that has never been surpassed. There was also, again, a tribute of Giorgiola's piece, The Sleeping Venice. Titian lived a long, accomplished life with his wife Cecilia and three children. His reputation and recognition as an artist was renowned and consistent throughout his life and in the eras after. His works had influenced many other great artists, including Peter Paul Rubens, whom I've also made a video about, and his influence remains in Western arts for many centuries after. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this short introduction to Titian, and I really encourage you to check him out more and perhaps go see for yourself some of his works in major museums and churches. Like and subscribe for future videos every week, and check out our previous videos on other historical artists and musicians, and leave a comment of who you want us to do next.